Next up, we're going to look at how to connect to a remote cluster, obtain a bucket reference from it, and open that bucket. In other words, how do we get there from our client to the Couchbase server? Along the way, though, we want to orient you to how the Customer 360 application itself is organized. There's some useful learning points that we've built into it. So as we've said, the labs for this course are built around the notion of a REST API, exposing get, post, put, and delete methods to a browser. So we're using in our base controller class a web framework called Spark. You can find more information at sparkjava.com. It's based on the Sinatra project, which you may be familiar with from other contexts. The controller is going to, in turn, invoke methods exposed by a class we've named Couchbase Repository. This is exposing a very straightforward create, read, update, delete API with methods like find by ID, create, update, and delete, but also an upsert method that is going to be explained as we go along. This class is where most of your work in the labs will be done. In turn, however, that class is going to work with the bucket API itself. The Couchbase API is exposed through the bucket object with methods for retrieval like get and query, which you'll work with, both of them. Insert for adding new documents, replace and upsert, the distinctions between which will be explained as we go along here, as well as remove for removing documents. We wanted to show how these methods map between one another because it could be useful if you are also trying to incorporate Couchbase and potentially a REST API around existing code that you have handling Java domain objects, POJOs. So inside the code, we'll have you look at application.java, which is where node addresses will be loaded, and it's what creates the cluster reference and the repository objects. The REST API itself is derived from this baseController.java class. That's what exposes the REST API, and then it's derived for specific APIs, for example, for handling customer objects. The framework that we've created here could be extended to other domain types as well. Most of your work, as we've said, will happen inside of Couchbase repository.java. This is where the CRUD interface and POJO to and from JSON serialization processes will happen, which is where most of the learning points for this course come from. It's what creates the bucket object and manages operations against that object. There's also a base class called Entity, which has some behavior you may choose to examine. This class is derived for the POJO data types that are being manipulated by Couchbase repository. You'll work with the customer type in this particular course, but you'll see that there's others. Values in these objects are serialized and deserialized by the repository class to and from JSON. So how do you reference a cluster in its bucket? Well, the Couchbase cluster class exposes a method called create to which you can pass an environment and the nodes that are the contact points for your particular cluster. So it's going to return a cluster reference for those nodes, which can be set by either a string or a list. And as said, it also supports an environment settings object for controlling things such as timeouts. Those could also be controlled in a more granular way as well as you would see in the documentation. In turn, that object allows you to open a specific bucket by name. If it is password controlled, that can be passed as well, and it'll return the bucket reference. So if you have some set of nodes, here a very simple example of a string variable, we'll do something a bit more complex in the lab, and then we have a string bucket name. Those nodes can be passed to the create method of the Couchbase cluster class, a factory method to return a cluster object. The cluster object, in turn, can be used to open a specific bucket by passing that bucket name. If there were a password, it would be passed here as well, as you would see in the lab. That returns the bucket object, which is your primary point of interaction with Couchbase. So obviously, there's got to be a lot more than what we're showing in that short slide. So the documentation can be found online, of course, docs.couchbase.com slash developer. You can find your way to the API documentation for the specific SDK version that you happen to be working with, as well as a great deal of other helpful documentation 
So now let's jump into the demo in lab. We're going to have you create a Couchbase cluster reference and open a specified bucket. But along the way, we hope you'll also examine codes such as serialization, deserialization, and the basic framework that's being exposed for the REST API. We assume by now you've imported the projects into Eclipse. You'll be working on Lab 3 here, and you might go into Lab 3 and take a look at a few things. For example, application.java, it's here within its main method that the cluster object itself is going to be created. In this case, it's being created from a set of values that are being brought in through a properties file, something a bit closer to real world here. And that cluster object is then passed off to a repository object, the cluster reference, and the name of the specific bucket to open. So let's take a look at that class over here under the data package. So Couchbase repository is what's going to create the bucket itself in one of its constructors. One takes a password, the other doesn't. But this class is also where you'll find the find by ID, create, update, upsert, and delete methods, all of which you'll be configuring at various points through this course. But you'll also find here the from JSON document and to JSON document methods. We don't have you write code in these methods, but I do encourage you to take a close look at these methods at how JSON is being serialized and deserialized from the local domain objects. So you can see those here, the root object is entity, and you'll see some behavior within here, such as how IDs are being stored within the object directly, as well as properties like created, updated, and CAS, all of which will make more sense to you as you work through these labs. You might also choose to go take a look at basecontroller.java. We won't be doing a lot of work with this in the labs, but this is where, for example, the get method and post method are all being handled from the browser, along with put and delete, as you'll see here. Now, I'll close lab three because I also want you to notice lab final. This has everything that would be done in all of the labs for this course already done for you in case you just want to skip to the point and look at the final working project. If you do this lab three correctly, you should at the end be able to open application.java in lab three, launch it, and see what we see here, which is a properly running Spark Java framework application listening on port 4567. So go ahead and jump to lab three within your workbook, have some fun with it, and we'll see you back here for lesson four.